this is like how Tesla's original master plan was. Build the Roadster, build a more affordable car, the S and X, then build an even more affordable car, the 3 and Y. So maybe from a business standpoint, Tesla is taking this perspective as well uh, with bi-directional charging, with home energy storage as well. Because again, as a business, they take time to scale. So if people are willing to pay more for, for a solution, that actually helps subsidizes the future generation of adopters as well. Like what we're seeing happen with EVs right now. Mm -hmm. And so a question for some people ask is, why don't we just use a power wall? Like if someone's really buying a $100,000 Model S or Model X, power wall $6,000 with subsidies is cheap, cheap. It's, it's a rounding error for them. But I think what people also realize is that the power wall's energy capacity is 13.5 kilowatt hours. Your standard Model Y is 77 kilowatt hours. It's five times more capacity in your car than a power wall. If you're only doing a single power wall, of course, if you stack and buy multiple power wall, it will be as much. But to Isa's point, if your car is in the home, could it be a feature? But someone at Warren would say, what if your car is not at home? Warren showed in his previous videos there's some data that peak electricity usage is usually when your car is not at home. It's not like you can't have both. Right? You, you, it's like there's only you, you can only do this A, A choice or B choice. Well, why can't you do both, right? So instead of just 1% of people that can have access to V2H, why not everybody who has a car? Now, the, the, and also this, this uh, analogy to Tesla's master plan, build an expensive one first, make the profit and build a cheaper one, doesn't apply here because you don't need a cheaper one now. It's already in your car. It's existing. You just have to turn it on. Yeah, you're making a choice not to turn it on so that people have to buy a more expensive product. So that actually goes against Tesla's main idea of uh, propelling us to a sustainable future. So for that five hours that we have to go on diesel, I counted just in my own taman here. Actually, many tamans was affected, right? I just drive my car around just my taman. Taman's like a neighborhood for, for those stuff from Malaysia. So oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, in my neighborhood, uh, there's probably like a few thousand, uh, maybe a thousand house, uh, a few hundred house, I don't know. Anyways, there were uh, four giant generators, like they, they come in the, eight, you know, these 18 wheelers, you know, they park there and they, they plug into the grid. There are four of them. And there's noise pollution, people can't sleep. It's very loud. And from 100 meters away, I can already smell the diesel. So there's pollution going on for five hours in the neighborhood and they're burning fossil fuel, right? Now imagine if, uh, even, okay, let's think, we're, we're talking about eventually, right? Eventually everyone's gonna drive an EV. If everyone is plugged to the house, they don't need this generator at all, right? So we are going into a more uh, uh, using less fossil fuel for any emergency, emergency situations. And we're going to have this all around the world, blackouts, rolling blackouts, all of this all around the world. And if, if you go further in the future, and, and remember I said this, uh, uh, I think what Warren was talking about is V to G. So like I say, for, for that argument, I'm a little bit, I, know, I, I might agree at this point, it's way better to have something that is always there on standby than to have something that isn't. But there is also a counter argument to that if you look further into the future. So if you look into the future where everyone is driving an EV and every car is capable of reverse charging, it doesn't matter where you park, whether you're in the office, whether you're at home, wherever it is, the infrastructure. Remember, I, I told you the government, there is this uh, uh, worldwide uh, organization working on V2X, vehicle to everything infrastructure for the mm -hmm. entire world. This would be like uh, the, the, what do you call that? The, the internet of things, right? So V2X is coming, whether you want it or not. So everywhere you go, there will be infrastructure for you to plug in your car. So imagine a billion cars times 77 kilowatt hour that's so much battery energy storage that you actually don't need. The, I mean, the grid actually don't have to buy, right? Because it's already there. Now, of course, that comes to the degradation. And again, the initial research they're showing now, at a low 
I mean, you're, you're letting the energy out at, at a low uh, wattage, right? Mm. At a low current rate. It actually helps stabilize your battery. So we don't actually know that part of it yet. So I'm, I'm actually open-minded to that. Because like for now, you're saying, okay, maybe only like 1% of people driving EV. It's just too much hassle. But when you have 100% people have EV, and you have infrastructure everywhere where everyone is plugged in all the time, and you have solar everywhere, that becomes a very, you know, uh, a, a completely different story, right? So we have to think ahead. So if, if you're talking about Tesla's whole mantra of bringing us to, instead of just making money, a fast buck, this is the way to go. And be a leader, take the lead, go for it.